is Martin here, Martin Anderson here on a Thursday afternoon. Thank you, Richard Beard, for covering for Roland while he's uh, away. And we are so pleased to be back with Tony Joe White. Welcome back, Mr. White. Thank you, man. <laughs> Glad to get back. The Swamp Fox is back uh, just in from uh, Athens last night. Is that right? Yeah, we played uh, last night. And in uh, fact, that was the first one we had a I think up in uh, the mountains, Ar Mountain View, Arkansas, we did uh, about three weeks ago and then come on down to Athens and kicked well, it off. So, so this is like last night was kind of the kickoff of a tour, you yeah. see? Yeah, we do um, it's like four days here and there, four or five, and then go back and fish a little bit and fry, fry a few crappie on the fire, mm -hmm. wood fire, and mm -hmm. drink a few cold beers and then head out again. Good, good. I, I'm so glad you mentioned it because, you know, a lot of folks are musicians and they listen to WMCW and they, they want to know how to make it, you know, touring on the road so much, how, how to make it and, and to be sustainable. And you pretty much describe it there. You do a few gigs and then you take time off to go fishing and cook some up, have a cold one. Yeah, and... Uh, the thing is, the riding, you know, through the years was always right up there in front for me. And if I stay out very long doing live stuff, over three to four weeks, four weeks would be tops. And that's like places like Australia or Europe where the flights right. a long ways. Anyway, you get where you don't ride and uh, you don't have time to. And... But when I get back home and I do what I just told you with a little fire and fish a little bit, all of a sudden an idea or a guitar lick would come into my head or a place that I saw had seen on the tour, stuff like that. So if you don't get out in the stream, you would just end up writing about fish and fishing poles. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to get on out. Which only goes so far. I mean, there's some yeah. good songs about that. Just so yeah. far to, you you know, you're having fun, enjoying the people, and they're dancing and booging to your stuff. And, you know, don't get no better than that. And then you back <laughs> off after a little while. Well, yeah, I mean, let's see, you're, what, 72, 73 or so now. You've got, uh, I don't know how many records under your belt, uh, almost a couple dozen Approaching 20 records, maybe? I probably have, and yeah. Somewhere around 15 albums out. 15 or so, yeah. Through the years. and I really hadn't really counted them. They just seemed like, kind of like children, you know. <laughs> and they just keep coming, and you love every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. It's, <laughs> it's like if I had to sit out and really try to write something, I'd be, be, I'd be as blank as this foot pedal. <laughs> Well, it's it's pretty inspiring uh, to know that you know you're you're of that age with that many albums and songs under your belt, and you still have that fire to to still write. Like it sounds like you, something something would just kind of explode within you or die out if you weren't able to still write songs. It's like this urge. It sounds like you have to keep on writing. Yeah, it's something I really don't have much to do with. It's like it was given to me really early, and uh, one comes by, or a guitar lick comes by, or a tower comes by, I sit down and work with it, and out by the fire, and hang right, and know that it, you know, it came from a higher spot, it came to me, and so, if I didn't, if it never did come, well, I would probably be the best fisherman I know of. <laughs> Or maybe still picking cotton? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no, that, no that, that is off the table, huh? No. Yeah. Those days are done. Um, growing up a child of, uh, what, seven kids, I think? Uh, yeah. Uh, growing I up. A, I was the youngest, and my brother was the oldest, and five girls in the middle. Yeah, in the middle, and on a, on a cotton farm in northern Louisiana. Yeah, right? Goodwill, down by the, the Bell Forever Swamps. <laughs> and you know, man, it seemed like it seemed like we had everything back there. It's like didn't even have an electric fan, you know, no shotgun house and but everybody we had a garden, we had a river. Could 
go jump in, cool off in the evening and stuff like that. And all of us look back on them times, my sisters and brother and everybody, that maybe they was the best. Hmm. Didn't have much, and yet you had everything you needed. Exactly, you know. And uh, then when they all played music, my dad, mom, sister, brother, and I didn't pick it up or even think about touching it until I was about 14. And uh, mostly I heard them playing gospel and country type. And then my brother brought home an album by Lyndon Hopkins. And, and I heard that and picked up Daddy's guitar and snuck it up to my room that night. And every night from then on, I would take it with me. And finally, I got a few of his licks down because mm -hmm. Dad liked to hear him play too, blues. And I came down one evening and I said, hey, dude, check this out. And I went. He said, Boy, where'd you get, where'd yeah. you get that? Yeah. <laughs> Eyes got all wide. I know, man. Anyway, he could play. Dad played like uh, Chet Atkins, thumb picked, and yeah. so I had music around me the whole time, and uh, the clubs and everything came uh, my high school year. Me and the drummer went out, played a lot of clubs, a lot of school dances, and then move on up to a uh, bigger town, Monroe, Shreveport. And finally down to Texas and down there, I was doing a lot of Elvis and uh, Lightning Hopkins and John Lee Hooker songs on stage. And then one evening I was sitting around the house and I said, I'm just kind of gotten tired of, of doing all these other tunes. I had, I had something to need to come out. And I was very lucky because um, I said, well, I'm going to, Try to write about something I know about, and I knew about folk salad. Hmm. Uh, my mother had, she was part Cherokee Indian, and said it had a lot of vitamins in it. She cooked it a lot for us, and I knew about Randy and Ice in Georgia, because I, when I left high school, before Texas, I drove a dump truck for uh, Marietta, Georgia, down there, living with my sister for a while. So those things started coming back to me when I was in Texas and thinking about trying to write. So I just started writing about real stuff and real people like swamp people and old man Willis and Willie and Norma Jones and all them folks. Yeah, and the the, the beginning of a of a great. Uh, many decade catalog was born of the music of Tony Joe White. You, you teased us with a few licks there, some Lightning Hopkins that you learned back in the day. To me, it sounds like they sound like Tony Joe White licks. <laughs> and uh, may, maybe you can uh, give us a song. You got your your longtime drummer buddy here, Fleetwood, joining us here in Studio B. It's Tony Joe White on WNCW.